Então, da XTB. Hoje, com um tema especial, portanto, dar que damos continuidade a, então, a, àquilo que temos vindo a fazer durante esta semana, que tem sido vários seminários de, de formação. Começámos na segunda-feira com a, os seminários de Fibonacci, padrões harmónicos, com, com o Eduardo. Hoje estamos... Um, Ontem, ontem uh, falei, tive a oportunidade de vos falar sobre a teoria das ondas de Elliot. Hoje e amanhã vamos ter a participação especial de Oliver Velas. Hoje uh, com um seminário chamado The Red Bar Takeout Play. Uh, portanto, um seminário onde vão, vamos tentar... Uh, ou, oh, neste caso, o Oliver vai tentar explicar-vos como é que podem uh, encontrar estratégias para... para... Uh, um, Conseguir encontrar fundos, portanto, fundos no mercado, em qualquer tipo de ativos, sejam nas ações, sejam nos índices, seja no mercado cambial, seja em qualquer um deles, uma vez que o mercado é sempre, é sempre fractal. Portanto, basicamente, o que vamos ver hoje é, portanto, uma estratégia de, no muito curto prazo, uma estratégia dinâmica de encontrar fundos nos vários ativos. Por isso, desde já, apresento-vos Oliver Velas. Oliver, uh, welcome to our webinar. Uh, Welcome again, as you, you have been with us, uh, I think it was last year, I think it was in October, uh, so you, um, you, are, uh, you are no longer a new, a new guy here. Uh, I think a lot of clients already, already know uh, who you are, already have been in one of your webinars. Uh, so let's start. Uh, o seminário vai ser em, em inglês, uh, para se tiverem alguma dúvida, uh, eu e, e, e o Pedro Santos também estaremos aqui para responder às vossas questões. Portanto, estejam à vontade, para caso tenham alguma dúvida, carregarem na, escreverem na vossa janela de questões à vontade. Uh, Oliver, welcome. You can, uh, you can start now, if you, if you please. Ok. Well, thank you very much for having me once again. It's always a pleasure to address you and, and, and all of your um, wonderful, wonderful active traders. Um, today, I have prepared a presentation that is very dear to my heart in a lot of ways. Oliver? Um, yes, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm talking. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Can you hear me? Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. Testing. Can you hear me? Hello? Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. Testing, Everything testing. is fine with the, with the sound. Everything's fine. Are we, are, can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, everything is fine now. Okay, okay. All right. Um, today I have prepared a presentation that is for, for everyone that is very dear to my heart. It's, of course, called the red bar takeout play. This is a specific strategy that is one of our most popular and one of our most played strategies of all. Um, I have, as, as some of you may well know, I have um, uh, over 4,000 traders that trade my capital personally every single day under specific guidelines. And this is by far the most powerful and most impactful strategy that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. And we use it, we use this strategy across all markets, and we use this strategy across all time frames. So we, we use this strategy in the, in the foreign exchange markets, in the forex market. We use it in the, in the stock market. We use it for commodities. Um, we use it across the board. We use it for swing trading and core trading or wealth trading. We also use it for income trading on the very small time frames. It is extraordinarily universal in its use. You can use it as in as small of a time frame as a one minute time frame, all the way up to a daily time frame, a weekly time frame, and even a monthly time frame. And of course, as I mentioned, it's universal across all markets. Now, this specific strategy is, is designed to help the trader pinpoint bottoms in the market or in the market that they're, that they're dealing with and in the time frame that they're dealing with. It has always been my opinion that the 
the best traders, the traders that instantly make the most money have a skill that other traders don't have and that skill sometimes is a feel but that skill is um, that skill that skill is the, this that skill is determined by when a when when a market is more than likely about to stop going down and to start a very enduring move to the upside. And most very large traders have, most consistent traders have that ability and have that skill honed better than most. Of course, the opposite side of that skill is determining when a, a market is tired and about to top out, but more important than the top is actually the bottom. So this strategy is designed to help you do just that. Now before, before we um, delve into the specific tactic itself, I'd like to go over a very general concept that will lay a perfect foundation for us and a perfect segue for us to go into the initial tactic. First of all, most of you are probably familiar with this but the market has one repeatable cycle. All markets go through one repeatable cycle over and over and over again. There are different, slightly different variations of this one cycle, but it's not two or three or four different cycles. It's variations of one repetitive cycle over and over again. Now, some people refer to this cycle as the boom to bust cycle, the economic boom to bust cycle, the bell-shaped curve cycle. The name is not important, but for the most part, all markets in all time frames travel along this path. There's a boom portion of the cycle, a bull portion of the cycle, there's a top of the cycle, there's a bear part of the cycle or a bust part of the cycle and then there's a bottom part of the cycle and we repeat. Now what makes identifying this cycle a little bit harder than this diagram suggests is that the, t the way a market tops is not always the same. So there are different variations of the way a market tops out and begins to go down. There are also different ways a market bottoms. A market doesn't bottom exactly one specific way all the time. It, it has a variety of different bottoms. So it has a variety of different tops and a variety of different bottoms. The way I teach my children this is that, you know, every market, some markets have different hats tops and some markets have different shoes bottoms but for the most part they bottom in a small variety of ways and they top out in a small variety of ways what also makes it a little bit more complex than this diagram might suggest is that the bull portion of the cycle is also not always the same there are different types of bulls there's there are fat bulls there's skinny bulls there's ex they're extraordinarily powerful bulls, and then there are feeble bulls, the bulls that are strong but not very, very, very strong. So there are different types of bull periods, different variations. There's different variations of bear periods as well. So sometimes a market just drops almost straight down, for instance, like this. Sometimes a market just suddenly drops. And so the right side of the cycle is almost a 90 degree angle drop. Sometimes it gradually drops in like a 45 degree angle fashion. Right? And sometimes it zigzag drops a lot more than other times. But these are just small variations of one thing, the bear phase. So I'm oversimplifying this cycle, but telling you that 
this is the only movement in every time frame that a market can actually travel along. The only difference sometimes is that the top is a little different. There are different variations of a top, different variations of a bottom, and a few variations of up and a few variations of down. But when you put them all together, all right, it really happens almost the same way every single time. Here's an example of one um, complete cycle, all right? The up part of the cycle, the top part of the cycle. Sometimes your tops are pointy as, in, as it is in this one, a straight up steeple top like the steeple of a church. And sometimes the top is sideways first before the drop. Right? So again, different variations of a top, different variations of a bottom, but at the end of the day, usually a stock is going to follow the cycle fairly consistently. There's a life to everything. And the reason why this is the case is because human beings are actually trading the financial markets. And this pattern or this cycle is the cycle of life for the most part. Everything we touch as human beings are ultimately going to go through this cycle. There are times when we are in the bull portion of our lives or happy, and then there are times that we are in the bear portion of our lives or happen to be sad during this period or, or experiencing highs and experiencing lows. Sometimes we top out, sometimes we bottom, and so forth and so on. So these are truly the footprints of human nature at work. Now, this cycle is really broken up into four distinct phases, which we talked about. One is the bottom part of the market, and that's going to be the focus of our talk today. Two is the bull portion of the market, the up portion. Three is the top portion. Now, remember, you can have a pointy top, or you can have a delayed top, you can have a rounded top. There are different variations, but three represents all the different types of tops that a market can have. Now, understand that I'm speaking across all time frames and all markets. Whether you're looking at a one minute chart, your item is going to go through this repetitive cycle. Whether you're looking at a daily time frame or a five minute time frame or a 15 minute time frame or a weekly time frame, that time frame will ultimately over time display this, these four stages over and over and over again. Now, if I'm right that the market will demonstrate this pattern over and over again, if it's a weekly time frame it, or monthly, it might demonstrate one back to one again over many years. If it's a 15 minute time frame, it might demonstrate one, two, three, four, over two days. If it's a five minute time frame, it might demonstrate a one, two, three, four over four hours. If it's a one minute time frame, it might demonstrate a one, two, three, four over 30 minutes or 25 minutes. All right? So no matter what time frame you're on, this one, two, three, four cycle it's going to happen over and over and over again. Now, if I'm right about this, and I am, by the way, but if I'm right, then it should go without being said. It should be understood that one of the keys to accurately trading the market is to know where you are in your time frames cycle. If you're trading a one-minute chart, you don't need to know what necessarily where you are in the daily time frame cycle, but you should know where you are in the one minute time frame cycle. Are you closer to a three than you are a one? Are you in the midst of a two in your, in your time frame? Or are you in the midst of a four? Because if you learn how to identify with, a, with regularity, with consistency, 
If you learn to determine whether or not you're a three at the moment or a one, you have the vast majority of this game we call trading mastered in a way. There can never be total, complete mastery, but you can truly perfect your craft as a trader by learning how to identify ones and threes. Because after ones come twos, very profitable periods. After threes come fours, another very profitable period. So while of course, it goes without being said, it would be nice to be able to identify and know when you're in a stage two or when you're in a stage four. The real skill comes in knowing when you are in a one about to move into a two and knowing when you're truly, when your stock or your currency pair or your commodity or your CFD has topped out and is legitimately in a three then the likelihood of a major four is next. That skill puts you over the top. The skill of being able to identify ones and threes and profit from twos and fours that follow. All right. Now, if I have any questions along the way, um, Moderators, you can have, I have no problem with you inter interrupting me and say, Oliver, let's get a few questions out of the way before we go forward so that they don't accumulate. I have no problem with that. Whatsoever. Yes, Oliver, I'm, I'm, I'm um, monetizing that. Okay. I'm taking care of that, don't worry. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, now, the way to properly play this cycle is to try to come into a market when your market is in the midst of one, preferably about to start two. Now, it's okay. There are many trading strategies that try to just get you on board at two. All right? There are many that do that. They are designed to first let a two form, let it be well-developed, let it be obvious, and then put the trader in an obvious two. And this is where you're coming, coming in in an obvious two. There are many trading strategies like that. Moving average crossover strategies are like that. There are many things that put you into a well-developed two. But I have always been fascinated with trying to capture the transition from a one to a two to enjoy the vast majority of your stage two. All right. I've also, I've also wanted to focus on getting out somewhere near the end. We can never know absolutely where the absolute end is all the time, but you can come close to knowing that you are closer to a three than you are to a one and that you're selling somewhere near the end of your two. You may not get the exact absolute top, but knowing how, developing a skill of knowing how to determine when you're closer to three than you are to a one. When you can legitimately say that, it's, it's actually time to start focus on weaning out of your play or your stock. Now understand, this whole cycle in a very short time frame can take place over 10, 15, 20 minutes. All right? Over bigger time frames, it can take place over months or years or what have you. But it is the same. Just microcosmic versions of the, the macrocosmic version. Now, notice what I'm pointing to here. I'm pointing to this specific area of one. You see, the buy that I have here is in the latter stage of one, the beginning of two. But there's, the be there's, there's this zone that is the latter stage of four and the beginning of one represented by this box. And it is this area of the cycle that the red bar takeout is designed to identify. 
as we go over in detail this one specific tactic, this tactic drills down and helps you identify this section of the cycle. It's an early identifier. It's this pattern isolates where four likely ends and is done and where one with sometimes an immediate two is going to follow instantaneously. And that's the beauty of this cycle. It captures more often than not, nothing is 100% as you know, but it captures more often than not the very last part of four and the beginning of one and two. All right. So with that being said, I'd like to start delving into the specifics of the red bar takeout. All right. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the indicator of choice that I use with this tactic is the 20 period moving average. I use a simple period moving average. Yes, if you are really absolutely in love with exponential moving averages or some other version, you can opt to use that one. I have just found no evidence that that the others are more superior than the straight, simple 20 period moving average. But the differences are so minor that it's okay to use whatever version you like. But I do use the simple period, 20 period moving average of the time frame that I'm focused on. Now there are I use the moving averages in a variety of different ways, but one very important way I use them is for location purposes. I judge my the location of the stock or the currency pair or the commodity or whatever you're trading. I judge its location based on the 20 period moving average. So location one is at or on the 20 period moving average. This means that the, the event that I'm interested in buying, let's say, is occurring right on the 20 period moving average. That event is touching the 20 period moving average. So in this case, the red bar takeout pattern that I'm going to cover is actually intersecting with the 20. It's touching the 20 period moving average. That's location one, touching. Okay, location two is not touching, but it's almost touching and it's a little bit above the 20 period moving average. And we'll look at many charts and examples that demonstrate this. So in this location, it's just a little bit above the 20, but the pattern that you're focused on, the event that you're focused on buying, let's say, is just above the 20. It's not touching it though. Then the opposite side, location three is a little bit below the 20 period moving average, but the event that you're focused on, in this case, the red bar takeout is not touching or intersecting, but it's razor thin, really close under the 20 period moving average. Then location four, now this is a very important location for us today. This is far be below the 20 period moving average deep below where there's that event that's taking place is not close to the 20. It has dropped so hard and so fast that it has separated itself from in, in a rather wide distance away and under the 20 period moving average. That's location four. Location four is very important for our talk today. Location five is the opposite of location four. It is way above the 20 period moving average, where there's been a dramatic run to the upside in such a fast way with, with such strength and velocity that your item, whatever you're trading, has separated itself to create wide distance between the 20 period moving average and the current trading location. Now, if we take these locations and we think about these locations in terms of this cycle, all right, 
if you're in location five, way above the 20 period moving average, you have to assume that you're closer to stage three, way above the 20 period moving average. You've got to be closer to stage three. If you're in location four, and the stock has dropped way below the 20 period moving average, then you have to assume that you're closer to one than you are to a three. So we use distance away from the 20 period moving average to gain our bearing of where we are in the general cycle. Okay, and I hope that makes sense. Okay, so location five, way above, you're probably close to three. Okay, you may have a little bit more, but you're close to three. And way below location four, you're, you may have a little bit more downside to go, but you're closer to one than you are three. And if you can just do that, if you can just regularly with accuracy, if you can just determine when you're closer to one and when you're closer to three, you have a lot of problems in trading resolved because that in effect is the key. You see the problem most traders have, losing traders play this cycle backwards. Losing traders, the only way to lose as a trader is to do this is to buy, this is the only definition of a loss, this is the only way you can lose consistently. If you're losing consistently, you're buying late stage twos and you're selling fours. It's the only way to lose. Now, of course, yes, theoretically, you can buy here and sell there and still be a loser. But in reality, the, the vast majority of traders are buy, they buy late twos and they sell fours. The exact opposite of what creates winning trades, which is to buy early twos, all right, and to sell late stage twos. Yes, you can sell over here, but that's not the most ideal. The most efficient traders buy and sell almost in the same phase. And of course, they short and cover in the same phase. Losers are different phase traders. They buy one phase late and somewhere along here sell a different phase and the most successful traders play in one phase of the cycle. All right, so I hope that makes sense. So here we go. Um, we, we've gone over the locations. Let's delve with, now let's look at the specific tactic itself. Here's, here's the, I'm gonna go over the criterion that make up, that, that, make, that makes up this tactic or this pattern um, one by one. Criteria one, you need a relatively sizable, solid red bar. Whether you're looking at a one minute chart, a five minute chart, a daily chart, the time frame doesn't matter. Whatever time frame or window you're looking in, you need a solid red bar. Now this solid red bar, now this solid red bar can have small wicks on either side of it. It doesn't have to be wickless, okay? I am most interested in the amount of red or the amount of negativity in the stock, the amount of downward movement from the open to the close. And I want to see a lot of red or I don't know if your platform does black. If it's black, I wanna see solid black. If it does red, I want to see solid red, and I want to see a lot of it. I want to see a fairly a lot of it. I want the vast majority of the bar's range to be 
negative, whatever color your program shows. Okay? Now, that's criteria one. Criteria two is that the most ideal position for this solid red bar is location four. The most ideal location is location four. Yes, location three is okay because that's just a lighter version than four, but four is the best location for this. I want to see deep, solid negativity way under the 20 period moving average. Now imagine this in your mind. Imagine what has had to occur to get your stock, your option, or your currency pair. What had to happen to get the item at location four? It had to drop over time and it had to drop pretty hard. Now after it's, that means after it has been in stage four for a while, okay? After it has been in a stage for a while, after it has declined, after it has dropped sharply, then I want a solid, fat, long, red or black bar. That late stage red negative bar is like the last hurrah of the bears, the last chance to celebrate, the last chance to show that they're strong because they've been using all of their ammunition throughout the four. But I want that red bar here. That's where I want that red bar. You see, the fat red bar here is an igniter, is a starter of things. But the fat red bar here, after an enduring four, after an enduring decline, after uh, an elongated drop, when you get a late stage fat red or black bar, that's usually the last one. So that location of well below the 20 period moving average increases the odds that we are capturing that red bar right in this spot in the cycle. Okay, now let me get back to my spot here. So solid red bar, criteria one. Criteria two, solid red bar well under the 20 period moving average. Criteria three, little to no follow through after this red bar. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that this red bar must stop and you have little to no additional down move, downward movement that, that happens after this red bar. It's as if this final red bar is a fake. It's not real. It tried to trick us because negative bars usually experience or, or lead to other negative bars. Real negative bars have spillover into the next bar. Real bearish bars don't just stop and go the other way. So I want to see little to no additional red. Now there's a reason I say little to no. I don't say no follow through. I say little to no because you can have a tiny bit, but it has to be mild. But I really, the most ideal ones have none whatsoever. Now, so criteria one, solid fat red bar or black bar. Criteria two, location well under the 20. Criteria three, little to no follow through. Criteria four, the high of the red bar gets taken out. Now, this is where 
we enter. We enter the play. If we get a fat red bar well below the 20 period moving average that experience little to no follow through, once the high of that final red bar has been taken out, that's our buy point. Our stop is usually placed under the red bar. Okay? Enter above the high of the red bar, stop below the low of the red bar. And, and, and what's beautiful about this is that whenever you lose, and there will be losses, and nothing's perfect, but whenever you lose, you lose one bar. You lose the red bar. That's it. Now, that red bar is sizable. It's not tiny, but it's still just one bar. But when you win with this strategy, I promise you, you will win many bars. Some of your winning trades will be eight bars. Some of your winning trades will be 14 bars. Some of your winning trades will be six bars, four bars, 10 bars, 12 bars. But every time you lose, you'll lose one bar. This is how you stay in the game. Coming up with strategies and techniques where it's their design where you lose much smaller than your average win. And on top of that, you win more frequently than you lose with the strategy. This strategy has an accuracy rate over 82%. 82% accuracy rate. If you limit it to the right location, location four, if you make sure that red bar has little to no follow through, and you make sure you enter above the high. And you make sure whenever you stop out, you always stop out losing just the red bar. You only lose this part. The market will take care of the winning trades. Your job is to take care of the stop outs. All right? So that's the criteria. One more time. Solid red bar, criteria one. Criteria two, location, well below the 20 period moving average. Criteria three, little to no follow through after that red bar. Criteria four, break above the high of the red bar, enter, stop under the low of the red bar. And you do these four things and Get identify these four things and enter the right place and put your stop in the right place, and you will gradually become an expert at grabbing this right before the move back to the upside. Now I'm going to show you many examples of this, but first let me show you this what I call the one bar allowance rule. When I say little to no follow through, that the reason is because you can have a tiny little bit of follow through. Little, but it's got to be little. And it's got to be only one bar allowance. Even that it's little, it's only one bar little follow through. And then it snaps back to the upside. One bar slip through the low. One bar, that's it. That's all you get. But as long as there's an immediate snapback into the red bar's range, it's okay. This is the red bar's range. Okay? So it's almost like a one bar peekaboo below the low, but snap back. One bar peekaboo, but that one bar can't be a long bar. It's got to be a tail or something. Tail. Oh, by the way, tails don't count as follow through. For instance, this is not follow through. Tails don't count as follow through. That's why the Japanese call tails shadows. The shadow is not the real thing. The shadow is cast by the real thing. 
all right? So tails do not count as follow through. But if you get a little bit of follow through, it can only be, you only get one bar allowance for a little bit of follow through, and it has to be very mild. Okay? Now, let's get to the fun part here. Red bar takeout play, catching the very bottom in the overall market. Let's look at a few things. Now, I'm going to use different time frames. I'm going to first start off with big time frames and then take you down to small time frames. Okay? But in learning it, a lot of times it's better to learn the pattern on a bigger time frame and then go to your smaller time frames just because the patterns on bigger time frames are a little cleaner. All right? So what we're looking for here, guys, look at this. What we're looking for is we're looking for a solid red bar. Again, it can have a few, it can have a wick at the top like this one. All right. It can have a wick at the bottom. It just has to be, you just have to have a fairly decent amount of red. The location, all right, the location, a nice distance under the 20 period moving average. All right? Decent distance, uh, decent distance under the 20 period moving average. Okay? Little to no follow through. So we blip below the low, but the same bar snaps right back into the red bar's range. Our buy is above the high. Okay. Our stop is below the low of the two bar pattern. Now sometimes it doesn't happen right away. Sometimes the high of the red bar is broken six bars later, five bars later, four bars later, and sometimes it's broken the very next bar. Remember what I had in my chart here, you have the immediate version where it happens right away the break above the high, and then you have the delayed version. Now, a lot of traders say, well, Oliver, which version is more powerful? The immediate, first of all, they're both powerful. But I found the delayed version a little bit more powerful. Delay an angry bull and make him angry longer, and he comes out of the gates even with more force. Delay the snap back a little bit, and the snap back tends to statistically be stronger. All right. So here's the here's the E mini S and P 500, the single the red bar takeout. All right. Nicely below the 20 period moving average, got you in right at the bottom of the market. Now let's look at a lot more, all right? Let's look at the NASDAQ, the E-mini NASDAQ, all right? Same pattern, same time, you know the markets are relatively similar. So you get your solid red bar. It doesn't have to be the longest red bar in the chart. It just has to be fairly solid. If it's going to have wicks, the wicks should be tiny, small, okay? And now we actually don't know if this red bar is going to have no follow through, but it, it just did have follow through. Okay. Now I'm looking at this bar and this bar has a, it peekaboos below the low, but snap, the same bar snaps back up. Tails don't count. Remember tails do not count. The high is broken right here, stop under the law, and we picked off the absolute bottom again. Now that's looking at, that's looking at the overall market. Let's take a look at individual stocks. Then we're going to take a look at individual currencies, and we're going to take a look at some commodities. We're going to look at uh, all the markets for the most part. Now, look very carefully and try to identify your red bar takeouts. All I did here, guys, was go through an index of 100 stocks. 
and I don't even think I got through all 100, but I just, you'll see them occur in, in alphabetical order. This is A. Solid red bar, got a little width at the top, that's fine. Tails don't count as follow through. Little to no follow through. Decent distance below the 20 period moving average. Okay? Your buy above the high, stop below the low, and once again, we have the bottom. Now, there are others. Remember, remember the location on the 20 period moving average. That's location one. Well, here's a red bar takeout on the 20 period moving average. They're not as powerful as the ones in location four, but all the locations mean something. Okay, solid red bar, little to no follow through. All right, take out the high, location on the 20, take out the high, stop below the low. But this is the most ideal. Sorry about that. This is the most ideal. Location four. Now, location four is not the that's not the easiest location to buy in because your item appears to be in trouble. And you all and a lot of traders doubt is this just a temporary bounce back to the upside? But you've got to, the reason why I always show a lot of examples of this because I try to build your confidence in the play. Here, solid red bar. One bar allowance. You get one bar allowance. This bar blips below the low. But as long as it snaps back into the range, that one bar allowance is okay. Okay? And what this does, if you think about it, isn't this location four, I mean, isn't this phase four, right? Isn't this phase two, the up part of the phase, isn't this phase one of the cycle? And didn't you grab that area I specifically told you about? It's the end of four, the beginning of one. It's beautiful. Four, one, two. Okay, let's take a look more. Same thing. This is four. Stage four, very clear. This is stage two. That's very clear. This is stage one. That's very clear. All right? Red bar takeout. Solid red bar. Now you had other red bars, but they had follow through. The one that doesn't follow through under the 20 period moving average is the one you want. That's the key. Which one doesn't follow through? This one didn't follow through. Buy above the high. Stop below the low. And you just grab that same area of the cycle I just told you about. The end of four, the beginning of one, picking off the bottom that leads into a two. Now look at look at your look at this location. Look at your red bar, no follow through, immediate takeout of the high at location one. Location one is intercepting, intercepting with, with the 20 period moving average. It's touching, it's crisscrossing it. That gave you a nice kickoff into your stage two. All right. I want you to take a look at the chart. I want you to First, you know, you're looking for a solid red bar, criteria one. You're looking for a location well below the 20 period moving average. You're 
looking for little to no follow through. Can you find the red bar that had little to no follow through? There it is. Red bar. Tails don't count. Little blip, but snap right back into the red bar's range. Okay. Delayed takeout. That's okay. But you have just once again, here's four. Here's two. Here's one. And where did you grab? You grabbed the very end of four. That's beautiful. You grabbed the very end of four, the beginning of one. You can become an expert at identifying this part of the cycle. An OMG. I don't know if you say that in your country. Oh my goodness. But if you become skilled at identifying this section, this part of the bell-shaped curve cycle, wow, your accuracy explodes. Now, you may decide that you combine other theories with this, like, okay, uh, I was talking earlier, uh, Elliott Wave. Okay, now, okay, in your last wave of Elliott Wave, what if this happens in your last wave? Wow. You know? So you can apply other things, but just identifying a solid red bar well below the 20 print moving average after it's been going down for a while. So you know you've had your four. This we know now to be our two going on. This we know now to be what was one. And where did your red bar no follow through occur? Boom, right there. The very end, it ends stage four. Solid red bar takeouts in stage four. That is priceless. A tactic, a strategy that very consistently zeroes in on the at the end of four. See, there's this notion that you can't pick bottoms in the market with any degree of regularity, any degree of accuracy. That's always stated by those who can't do it, of course. And this is not the only pattern that identifies bottoms, but it is our favorite one. All right. Give me your solid red bar that had little to no follow through. And once again, you have nailed that critical area of the bell-shaped curve cycle. This was the four. This we see clearly now as the two. This is the one. Wow. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? Over and over again, I can show you hundreds. And the beautiful thing about this is that this happens all the time. I, it's not something that's rare. Solid red bar, little to no follow through. Take out the high. Where did you wind up? Getting in, in that same important zone in the cycle. It's powerful and extraordinarily accurate. Solid red bar, no follow through, red bar takeout. 
takes out the high, stop below the low. And there's your move. Where did you wind up grabbing? Grabbing it, you wind up buying the one, the stage one, which broke into the two move. One, the two. Okay? You can clearly see this as a one. All right? You can clearly see this as a two. Where did the red bar take out, get you in? Solid red bar. Little to no follow through, you get a one bar allowance. Okay? Snaps back into the range. Takes out the high of the red bar. And this is your eventual reward. No matter what the time frame, guys, I know I'm looking at dailies right now. We're going to look at intraday time frames too. All right? Solid red bar. One bar poke through, snap immediately back into the red bar's range. Take out the high of the red bar. Stop under the low. Okay. And that's your reward. Look, another solid red bar. But this is in location three. Remember location three is not touching, but just under the 20. All right, location three. Take out the high. Little to no follow through. And there's your secondary reward. Okay, look, here's stage four. Here is stage two. Here turned out to be a pointy one. Remember I told you some of the ones and some of the threes are pointy. They're not flat. But look. I don't know if you can see it hiding from you. Trying to hide from you. Solid red bar. Criteria one. Well under the 20. Criteria two. Little to no follow through. Criteria three immediate, in this case, immediate takeout of the high. Enter. Stop under the low. Look at your reward. Wow. This is a, this is location two. Not touching really, but just above the 20 period moving average. All right. The most ideal location is location four. As you know, simple but oh so powerful. Solid red, zero follow through, well below the 20, take out the high, you have grabbed the absolute bottom. This turned out, as you know, to be this is four. Two, because they're the most obvious, and one in your cycle. Look at where you bought the absolute low at the very end of four and the beginning of one. Wow. Now, a lot of traders focus on trying to get in at the end of one, the beginning of two. And that can be done as well because a lot of times on your sideways ones, you get additional red bar takeouts. But the danger in ignoring these, the ones that happen right at the end of four, and just trying to isolate these, is that you'll miss your pointy bottoms like the chart I just showed you. So 
you if someone thought that this was going to go sideways and then go up they missed this so you don't want to miss your V bottoms that's what we call them, V bottoms so I'm always willing to, to get in early even if it goes sideways for a little bit later and then goes up I okay, hope that makes sense okay so yeah some traders try to just get in to these All right but and I understand the reasoning but you still want the early ones the ones that in the four solid red bar under the 20 little to no follow through four two one where'd you buy at the very bottom the very final part of four and there's your reward it's over and over and over again four One, red bar, under the 20, no follow through, gets its high taken out. Another red bar, no follow through, gets its high taken out. And this is the one that really starts it going. over. I show a lot of examples. These are all grabbed today. Look at the date, July 2nd. These are all grabbed today for your presentation. They're not carefully hand-selected. I just chose the NASDAQ 100 and went down the list. That's how prevalent these things are. Solid red, under the 20, tails don't count, no follow through. Okay. If you start to add the other things that I've taught you in, in former presentations with this, this is it's it's amazing, it's crazy. Solid red bar below the 20, no follow through, tails don't count. Take out the high, buy above the high, stop below the low. Where did you wind up getting in? Once again, in that all-important location, become an expert at, and most of this game, we call not all of it, but most of it's conquer. All right? Sure one. This strategy will never have you buying a late stage two. just because of the location concept far below the 20 okay this is an interesting one because I tell my traders that a topping tail is the same as a solid red bar you know what happened in there <laughs> All right this bar is no different from that bar. If you think about it, didn't this bar drop from its high? Think about it. Oh, I can't get that. So topping tail bars well below the 20 are counted as solid red bars. We count them as solid red bars, little to no follow through. Let's see, going down this weird. So 
of the high. Four. Repetition has a certain value here. That's why I keep doing the same thing. One, pointy one, a pointy one formed. Where did you get in? Exactly. bottom. So I wasn't joking when I said become an expert at picking off the low. Solid red bar, well below the 20 period moving average. Little to no follow through. Takes out the high. Where did you wind up getting in? At the exact bottom. Solid red bar, well below the 20 period moving average. Little to no follow through. Take out the high. Where did you wind up getting in? At the exact bottom. Now I hope by now that you're amazed at the accuracy of this thing. They don't all work but the vast majority do. It's designed. This pattern is accurate for a very, very sound reason. All right? It is a fat red bar happening after a long amount of selling. It's late stage negativity. It's last of, there's a saying in the States, the last of the Mohicans selling. The last final batch of sellers. There are really no more sellers left. This is their last stand, their last showing. They don't have more to sell. Powerful. Sorry, there's a two. Okay, let's take a look at a, a few foreign currencies with precision picking bottoms in the currencies. Let's take a look at a couple. Here's the U.S. dollar. Let me look at the index. Here's the U.S. dollar index. I'm sure by now you can tell where there was at least the one no follow through bar. There was a failure here too. We'll look at the failure. Solid red bar under the 20. No follow through. Tails don't count. Take out the high. All right. Where did you find it, wind up getting in? Right at the bottom. Now, you have one here too. It's important to look at the failures. You have one there. One bar allowance. Eventually gets its high taken out. Okay. Now, my traders, when they get stopped out of a solid play, they have to take the next one but double up. Because if you Oliver, play solid, Oliver? yes, yes. Um, the the current bar that is the developing can that be used as an has an example to to enter in the market right now. Oh, absolutely. So let's go over the criteria. Solid red bar, well under the 20 period moving average. Little to no follow through so far. Now we don't know if the high is going to be taken out, but if it does, that's exactly what we're what we're talking about. Great find, great catch. Absolutely. And 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 this is a perfect example of it not. It won't, in the beginning, it's not going to feel good to you because it goes against every human urge, which is where the profits are. The profits aren't with in sync. The profit opportunities don't come in sync with human urges. That's why I'm always telling my traders, you have to actually go through the process of, of dehumanizing the way you think and feel. 
because this stage way below the 20 does not feel good as a buy because of the downward movement, because of the negativity. But when you see this over, and I mean tens of thousands of times, you start to really gain an absolute ironclad confidence in it. And what's the downside, really? Not that much. It's really not that much. So you go for it. Absolutely. You go for it. All right? Look at this one. British pound, red bar takeout under the 20, little tall through, eventually gets the high taken out here, and there's your reward, All right? Um, the Canadian dollar, you had it over here, solid red bar, under the 20, no follow through, take out the high, and wow. Now, there are other things that I've taught you in other sessions, like we add on elephant uh, bars. Oliver, here, here you also have a... a sorry. Oliver? Uh-huh. I, I think I know what you're going to say. <laughs> yes, um, it's because of the, the actual example that you, you are developing also in the last two, two candles. Uh -huh. uh, is that an example, too? Is in, you mean this one here? Uh, no, the um, oh, okay. last two, yeah, it's exactly those ones. Um, in this case, where would you place the stop, the take profit? Okay, so in, for instance, let's say we're let's looking at the market now. We're looking at the market now. So what what I do if look green solid green bars on location one are viable. Solid green bars way below the 20 are also viable. Just like in reality, what we're looking at here, if we join these green bars together and create one bar in our mind, what we're really doing is buying a fat green bar. That's all we're doing. So green bars under the 20 like this, are viable green bars on the 20 like this are viable green bars way above the 20 guess what they're sellable so we sell the color green at a distance away from the 20 especially if the bar becomes somewhat sizable now if we're elevated above the 20 like this and the green that develops is not sizable then we get out if it breaks the low of the green but we don't, I don't sell the break of the low of a green near the 20. I only use the sell below the low of a green well above the 20 in location five. That's when the elimination of green is most meaningful. The elimination of green down here is not all that meaningful. But elimination of green way up here is very meaningful. So it's always, I'm always getting my traders to think in terms of location because location, then if you identify the location right, then you get the action right, all right? So this is the, op, this potentially, if this green was bigger, it would be the opposite of the red bar takeout. It would be the green bar takeout elevated well above the 20 period moving average. And that's a possible short position. And of course, every time it's always, if, if you've got a two bar pattern, it's the stop is always above the high of the two bar pattern. Or if there's a two bar pattern here, your stop is below the two bar pattern. It's the lowest point of that bottom or the highest point of that top. Now I've got, I've got some commodities to show you here. And I think there's one that's setting up right now in rough rice, but um, look at crude oil, guys. And this, we, we played this. Um, look at this red bar that experiences no follow through, decent distance below the 20, and gets its high taken out. There's your entry, your stops under the low, and it's still going. It truly, really is still going.
right? But this identified the low in crude oil. Um, here's heating oil. I mean, I'm sure by now you're experts at identifying it. All you got to do is look at areas well below the, the 20. Solid red, no follow through, take out the high, and that's your reward. Okay, that's heating oil. Then there's um, live cattle. Look at the live cattle run, and look at what I look at. Look at that solid red bar that had zero follow through. It took a while, but when that red bar finally finally went, I mean this thing went ballistic. Okay, now we also stack. I don't want to confuse it too much here, but we stack consecutive bars to create in our mind a solid bar because some bars are really one bar just broken up into little pieces. So in reality, this is a solid red bar. And I mean, once that goes, the stage two is really in full force here. All right. But I don't want to complicate things. Initially, you need to focus on the single ones that form in the right locations. Now, here's an example of solid green, a decent distance away from the 20 now. All right? So you got to start thinking that you're approaching the latter stage of two. When you start to get solid green, bars elevated away from the 20 you have to assume late late stage two not not early stage two late those are late stage two signs all right you still might have more upside here but there is a lot less upside than there is downside so you're late in the cycle when this starts to happen and Look at this beautiful in silver. We're in silver and in we're gold currently as well. But look at you, you, you know the reason. The reason is very clear to you now. Solid red under the 20 takes out the high, all right, and the explosion to the upside. And it, this is still going to go higher because you're, you're certainly not early stage two here. I mean, you're not late stage two yet. No signs of that yet. So this is going higher in my view. And it's just, it's, it's, it's powerful. This is the one, this is as of today. So this to me looks very interesting in rough rice. You've got solid red bar well below the 20, no follow through. It's about to take out the high. Very interesting. So, so now what I want to do, and this is the last portion of my talk. I want to I want to show you this on small time frames because we've looked we've just looked at dailies in different markets because it's it's beautiful to teach you on the daily and please take plays off the daily it's big money on the daily chart but there's a lot of income producing opportunities every day with this on the five minute even the one minute all right and so I want to show you a few examples of those. Now these were grabbed today in, in the US stock market. All right. I just did it really fast. I didn't I couldn't grab a lot. I didn't have time for that. But I grabbed I grabbed a few for you. What you see here, solid red. This is a five minute chart. Okay. Solid red. All right. Some of these produced decent big gains and some of them didn't. But I just want to show you how accurately you are catching the end. All right. No little to no follow through. Take out the high. You're always going to risk just one one bar basically, and it starts to grind higher. All right. Um, five minute chart of NOV. Stock is in a powerful four here. When does it end? Does it end here? All right. No, because we have follow through. Does it end here? Well, okay, we got one bar allowance, immediate snap back. So now, see, I don't know that's going to happen, but when it happens, okay. All right, now my buy is above the high. I'm only risking that one red bar. 
and that's my five minute, my multi five minute bar move to the upside. Okay. Now again, when you start to get fat green elevated above the twenty, you know that's that stage um, three. That's late stage two signs. All right, late stage two. So you've got your four, you've got your one, which turned out to be a pointy one, your two, your three, all right? And now you're drifting four. Yes, you can come in. All right, powerful. Oh, beautiful. Look at cost on the five-minute chart. This is Costco. I don't know if you have those in your country. but. Solid fat red bar. Uh huh. Solid fat red bar under the 20 period moving average. No follow through, immediate take out of the high, and you picked off your low. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. So I. I, I would like you experimenting in all time frames that you're able to here. Five minute. Now we have the four. We have the drop, right? We have the four from the open. And then you had, when it got below the 20, you know that you're closer to a one than you are a three now. But you don't really know what's going to happen. And you don't have to know. A lot of traders get into that mode. I know. Yeah. Um, a lot of traders get into this mode where they think they think they have to know what's going to happen. You don't. It's just when it happens, you need to leap into action. But you don't have to know that this bar is going to have no follow through. But if it doesn't have any follow through, that's it. Now buy above the high. It's simple. But you don't have to know. Like, you just have to be in the moment and you have to be able to determine when what you're looking for happens. That's it. But you don't have to know in advance. There's no need to know anything in advance. No need. Look at this, guys. Look at Rig, the big oil company, right? Here's your four. Here's your solid red bar way below the 20 period moving average. Little to no follow through. Takes out the high. All right. Turns out to be. All right. Start moving back up in a two. And you turned out to actually buy the absolute low. So this is today. All today. Activity today. All right. Here's, an, here's actually. So you. Oh, no, actually, I think this is July 1. I'm sorry. But anyway, um, solid red bar, all five-minute charts on X sign, right? Solid red bar, well below the 20. You don't know if there's going to be more follow-through, but you don't have to know. There isn't any more follow-through. Okay, you didn't have to know that in advance. You just have to know it when it happens. Buy above the high. And look at this multi five minute bar run. The point, the point here that I'm always telling you, when you lose, look at what you lose. All right? You're always losing one bar. But when you win, this is what you win. I mean, how many of these bars fit inside of that one? How many circles fits inside that? That's that's how you stay in the game. You know, now you've got to become good at managing your trades too. Guys, if you want, just you can become a friend of mine on Facebook and make sure you're doing this right. Make sure you get your questions answered. I'm sure our moderators here can probably answer most of your questions as well. But this URL leads you directly to my Facebook page, and I answer almost every question that's presented to me here. So I just want to make sure you're applying this right. You have everything down, down pat, whatever. You can send your questions to me here if you like. But this pattern is a pattern for all markets 
in all time frames for swing trading, core trading, for micro trading on the one minute chart, um, micro trading on the five minute chart, currencies, stocks, CFDs. It is produced in every single market and it's human beings producing it. So unless we have Martians all of a sudden come down from outer space and start trading and they have a different emotional makeup, then maybe we'll have other patterns to look at. But this is one of our most potent, accurate patterns we use for picking on bottoms. And I hope I've shown enough examples for you today to show how accurate it possibly is. Now, nothing is 100%, mind you. You will have stopouts, but your stopouts will be very small in number compared to the winning trades, and you're only losing one bar on your stopouts. When you're winning, this pattern, because it's a bottom picker, because it's a bottoming pattern, it when it wins, it leads to big wins normally. It's not a pop and get out right away play because it's such an accurate identifier of the end of stage four and the beginning of stage one and two. So you want to try to manage for big games with this. Do through and, and we recommend multiple sells. So you don't, if you sell to take some profits right away, you sell part of your position if you can. And then you hold on to a part for the bigger gains that this, this pattern can, can lead to. And there you have it. I hope it's been informative. Um, I encourage that you go out there and experiment with it. Do it. And I'm going to answer your question should you have it. And thanks a lot for having me. Thank you, Oliver. Um, I've been quite busy uh, answering to all the questions that have, that have been <laughs> okay. popping the, the questions uh, window. Uh, but I think I I have answered all, uh, answer all the, the questions that, uh, that come up. Great. So I think everything is in line with... Uh, well, with okay. I, I hope you all come back tomorrow. I'm actually speaking tomorrow at the same time. Is that correct? Exactly, exactly. At 10 p.m. here in Portugal. Uh, tomorrow is going to be what? What is going to be the dean tomorrow? Um, we're. I'm going to actually cover uh, two things. I'm going to go over a little bit more detail the opposite version of this, which is the green bar takeout. But I'm also going to going to bring into play um, um, a, a, a Bollinger Band approach to um, to our trading here tomorrow. So it's going to be interesting. Okay. Well, Oliver, thank you very much. So see you, see you, you. tomorrow again to, at see you the tomorrow. same time. Okay, enjoy uh, your evening. Very... Sorry? Uh, enjoy your evening. Okay, thank you. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a wonderful uh, exposure that you have been uh, giving here. So we, we will hopefully wait for you for tomorrow at the same time. So thank okay. you again. And thank uh, you. see you tomorrow. Okay, uh, see you tomorrow. Just, yeah. please, uh, please just pass me the... Um, We'll the, the view. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Good night. Uh, agora estamos uh, então de volta em português. <laughs> Queria vos então agradecer pela pela participação neste neste seminário. Espero que tenha sido uh, interessante. Espero que tenham gostado uh, deste tipo de de abordagem, portanto uma abordagem diferente, uma abordagem Espero que também tenham entendido, basicamente, é um pouco um jogo entre, entre aquilo que é o price section, a observação de uma forte vela uh, vermelha, sempre abaixo da média móvel de 20 períodos, de uma forte vela vermelha que caia, uh, que sofra uma reação forte novamente em alta deles, que ele esteja, ele esteja abaixo da média móvel de 20, dando o sinal de compra, uh, o stop loss fica abaixo do mínimo dessa vela vermelha uh, e, e deixamos então correr... O, correr o trade uh, aqui sem, sem grande especificidade naquilo que é o take profit uma vez que uh, fica sempre inerente à, à condicionante do, do, do ativo se temos uma resistência mais próxima, mais longe uh, mas o importante é que a expansão da vela vermelha ou seja, o tamanho da vela vermelha seja expandido em alta para que saibamos que ok, ele já subiu o mesmo tamanho da vela vermelha Colocamos o stop loss agora no break-even e deixamos o trade, uh, o trade, o trade correr. Uh, 
Portanto, aqui um pequeno resumo, tentei fazer aqui um pequeno resumo em português daquilo que basicamente é este, este, esta estratégia. Uh, amanhã o Oliver vai falar exatamente desta estratégia, mas adaptada aos shorts e adaptada uh, muito também ao mercado de índices e de, e de, e de forex. Uh, e também uma, uma estratégia diferente com base nas bandas de bowling, era algo que nós também usamos bastante, embora aqui adaptado à, ao RSI por, para, para medirmos algumas divergências dentro deste, desta estratégia. Uh, Resta-me então agradecer a vossa participação. Já sabem, se tiverem entretanto também alguma dúvida, uh, eu vou-vos deixar aqui o meu e-mail. xtb.pt portanto para caso tenham uh, alguma dúvida em relação a este, um, a este, este seminário a esta estratégia uh, também irei estar uh, obviamente em contato como sempre com, com o Oliver uh, para o caso de haver aqui alguma dúvida mais, mais específica mas estejam à vontade uh, para esta um, para, para colocarem questões algumas dúvidas, algumas sugestões, críticas tudo o que sejam à, à, à mercê de, de necessidade Uh, da minha parte é então tudo. Muito obrigado a todos por, uh, pela vossa participação neste seminário. Amanhã voltamos com mais, às 10 da noite, para mais do Oliver. Às 6, com o mesmo link de este, poderão uh, assistir a um seminário também de análise técnica muito interessante com o Nuno Melo, uh, com base também nos indicadores, no Price Action, portanto vai ser, vai ser bastante interessante. Mas, mas depois às 10 temos então o Oliver novamente com esta estratégia de, de bandas de bola.